Hi, I'm Rowan from Vantage Admissions. In this video, we're going to work through a Cambridge Engineering interview question. Now, although this wouldn't necessarily be the hardest interview question that you could expect to receive in a typical interview, it does exhibit a couple of really useful ideas which come up in many problems. If you're interested in more interview questions, do remember to subscribe. And if you want broader support with your interview preparation, remember to visit our website. In this question, we're considering a fixed frictionless spherical surface, really a hemisphere, a radius r, with an object placed at the very top. It's slightly displaced, and so it's going to be able to slide down. So we need to first of all draw a force diagram, deriving an equation which comes from considering the centripetal forces. And then finally, we need to think about the angle at which the object loses contact with the sphere where we're going to measure our angle measured between the vertical and the radius running to the object. So I'd strongly recommend at this point that you pause the video and have a go yourself before watching on. And assuming you've now had a go, let's solve the question. So first of all, when we draw our force diagram, we obviously don't want to draw the diagram with the object being up at the top, uh, because in that case, you know, it's a very special configuration that we're actually going to deviate and then move away from. So let's draw the object at a general position over here. And for consistency with what we're going to do later, let's parameterize the position using the same type of theta uh, that was indicated. So we'll use theta measured with the vertical. So what are the forces at play? Well, first of all, we've got the weight of the object. So mg, if we write m for the mass of the object, We've also got a normal reaction force. So as ever, that's going to be perpendicular to the surface of the hemisphere, since that's what the object's actually sitting on, and it's going to be acting outwards. And in fact, that's it, right? There's no friction, so it is literally just these forces. Okay, so now we can think about centripetal forces. So we know that at a general point in the motion, we're going to have centripetal force is equal to mv squared over r. In another question, we might think about proving that, but in general, this is something quotable and something that we should certainly have memorized. And what are the centripetal forces? Remember, the centripetal forces are measured inwards towards the center of the circle. So n is actually going to be a minus n. It's acting outwards. And the inward centripetal force is just going to be the cosine theta component of the weight right, because cosine will collapse the angle down when I resolve along that line, and by alternate angles, this angle here is theta. So we get mv squared over r is equal to mg cos theta minus n. So, so far, so good. We now need to think about what the physical constraint is that we get from losing contact with the sphere. So the intuition of losing contact with the sphere must correspond to something mathematical. And this is a really important point that comes up in lots of questions. At the moment we lose contact with something, the normal reaction force is going to be equal to zero because you're actually on the point of losing contact and therefore there's going to be an absence of contact forces. So this is usually going to be the condition that we feed into the equations to actually impose the loss of contact. So I can plug n equals zero into the equation and I get mv squared over r is equal to mg cos theta. And in fact, we can see the m cancels. So it's nice in an interview to comment on these sorts of things. The fact that, oh, m has cancelled. The mass of the object is actually not going to be a factor in the answer. It's nice to volunteer these sorts of reflections without being prompted to do so. Now, we're not done. We can't get a number out of this by any stretch because I don't know what v is at the point of losing contact. So this is now the difficulty. We need to hopefully find an expression for v squared. It would be nice if it appeared in such a way that would let me maybe cancel out something like the g on the other side, although, you know, that's not guaranteed. So sometimes when we want to think about a velocity or a speed, we'll do something like maybe use Newton's second law to study accelerations. Maybe it'll be a SUVAT type of thing. Clearly here, the acceleration is going to be variable because the thing that changes my speed is the tangential component of the weight, the mg sine theta, and that's constantly varying. 
So if we want to study the change in speed as time varies, that's going to require us to grapple with a, a differential equation. The acceleration is genuinely variable. We won't be able to use anything nice like SUVAT. So it feels like force considerations aren't likely to be all that helpful. However, we can use energy considerations. So this is a real theme in interview questions, far more than in, say, A-level, we're often going to need to use conservation of energy without being prompted to do so. In this problem, there is no friction, so no energy is being lost due to work done against friction. There's no more energy being input, so I know that the gravitational potential energy that I have at the start must match the sum of the GPE and KE at a general moment. So what can we say by conservation of energy? I mean, this is a real theme in sort of mechanics problems generally, that you can avoid grappling often with differential equations, or at the very least, you can deal with a nicer, say, lower order differential equation by prioritizing energy over force. So if I treat the base as the level of zero GPE, of course, it doesn't matter where I define as zero GPE as long as I'm consistent. My initial GPE is MGR. Now, at a general point in the motion, my kinetic energy is a half mv squared. So this looks very good, right? We want v squared and it's showing up. As for my height at a general point, well, I can simply do Sokotoa. So I can see that this length here is obviously by Sokotoa going to be r cos theta. So I get mg r cos theta. So now I can see, well, I can cancel through an m and I can multiply through by two, and I can bring this over. So I can see that V squared is going to be two G one minus R, uh, sorry, one minus cos theta rather times R. So I've multiplied through by two, brought that over, and I factored out the R. So now I can plug that into this equation. So you see, we've managed to find this unwanted parameter, by using another physics principle. So I get 2g, one minus cosine theta r, divided by r is equal to g cos theta. Now this is even nicer than we had dared to speculate previously, right? Previously we'd speculated maybe the g might cancel. It's often the case because of conservation of energy that v squareds and g's are gonna get related in equations. But even the r is canceling through. So again, a nice opportunity to reflect. Both of the physical parameters, really, on which the problem depended, the radius of the sphere and the mass of the object, have both dropped out. This is universal behavior for a mass of any object on a frictionless sphere. So I cancelled the R's, I cancelled the G, and now what I've got is that 2 minus 2 cos theta is cos theta. So theta is going to be our cos of uh, 2 thirds. So not too difficult, provided we took the initiative to actually think about things beyond just force considerations. The question in some sense was almost misleading by telling us at the start to think about forces. And we needed to show our physical maturity in realizing that energy was also going to play a key role. I hope you've enjoyed this question. If you'd like more similar videos, do remember to like and subscribe and let us know in the comments what you'd like to see next. Thanks for watching.